this Ohio farmhouse. I am Jenna. Today I'm going to be making some pumpkin butter because let's be real, my kids devour this stuff. Every fall at the pumpkin patch, I always grab some for them. Um, and I mean, it's within a couple of days. <laughs> they just have eaten everything. Uh, so I got some the other day and I'm pretty sure that my son Nolan ate uh, I, I think he ate it for every single meal of the day. So we're already out, but we actually just had our harvest party for the year uh, over the weekend and we had an awesome time, but I have all of these um, pie pumpkins that we had picked up because we use them for some games. Um, so I have far more than what I need even for just decorating. And so I'm going to put these to use today and I'm gonna make some pumpkin butter for the kids and hopefully keep the sugar load down a little bit because most of the recipes have an exorbitant amount of sugar in them. And so we're going to improvise a little bit, make it a little bit on the healthier side, um, but it's really a simple thing to do. So I'm just going to cut this open. Um, I'm gonna get my oven going real quick. Okay, so I have my oven going, it's 375, and once that's ready, they're only gonna be in the oven for about 45 minutes. Um, so I'm gonna use my knife here, and we're going to cut the top off, just like if you were going to carve it. You definitely want a sharp knife, because this is a pain in the butt, if not. Okay, and you should be able to lift that right out. And then I'm going to take this and just cut it in half. Okay, so this all is going to get scooped out. Um, and then we're gonna throw these onto a cookie sheet and they're gonna go in the oven um, just brushed with a little bit of olive oil or whatever oil you have on hand. You're just gonna give it a little coating um, and then we're going to actually stab the top of them so that the steam can release. And then it's really simple, they're just gonna go in the oven. So our harvest party over the weekend was so much fun but we really had probably the first kind of bitter cold day that we've had so far. Um, leading up to that, we had some really great 70 degree days. Um, and then we woke up and we were all at football and soccer games that morning with our kids. And it was, it was windy and really cold. It was in the 50s. Um, so we had fires going and everybody dressed warm and we all still had an awesome time, but it was definitely a chilly one, that's for sure. Okay, so I'm just putting this upside down on my cookie sheet. I'm gonna clean this other one out. So our harvest party, traditionally we started um, just as a fun thing for our family to get together. Um, and over the past couple of years, we've had family that have moved out of state and some that just haven't been able to come. And so we actually started opening it up to some of our friends. So this year we actually we let each of our kids got to choose one family that they really, really wanted to be there. <laughs> and so um, we had some of our really great friends over. We just played tons of games and we had a fire. Um, it was chaotic. The kids went on a scavenger hunt and um, it was just super fun. If you wanna see some of our videos from past years, we have some of those up. This year I was like, I am going to just enjoy spending time with our friends and our family while they're here and not worry about filming. And so I just kept the camera off. So I actually have very little footage of ours from this year, but I actually enjoyed myself and had a really great time. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to repeat this with the next several pumpkins here. Um, there are different ways that you can actually cook these pumpkins down. Some people will 
kind of boil them instead. Um, I've been told that that creates a lot of extra moisture. Um, I haven't ever done it that way. So when you have extra moisture, that just means that you're going to be cooking it for a lot longer. And to be quite honest, um, I am just busy and I don't really want to sit around and do this all day. Um, I have to get through school with my kids and taking my daughter to an eye appointment that's like an hour and a half away. So that's what we're up to today. So I'm just getting this going so that it can start cooking and doing its thing while we start school for the day. So I won't bore you and drag you along for all of these, um, but I'll just show you real quick. I'm going to just kind of stab a few holes into the top of the pumpkins. Uh, let me grab my, my olive oil. Just gonna rub a little bit of this on the surface. And then those are good to go. And I'm gonna pop those right in the oven. And like I said, it should take about 45 minutes or so. And then we'll get them out and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna turn that into pumpkin butter. The pumpkin skin off and I'm putting it here in my pot um, I'm gonna give the rest of these skins to the chickens or the pigs and they're going to really appreciate getting that um, it really just comes right off it's pretty simple and I'm gonna let this start cooking down in my pot I'm going to run real quickly while this cooks out. Let's go out. I'm going to go actually give this to the pigs and just check on them. So let's go outside. Now, they're all covered in pumpkin guts. This is literally the most amazing fall day. It's gorgeous. I'm gonna actually head back inside and check on our pot of pumpkin and then start stirring that down and I'm gonna get my immersion blender going and start adding some spices and delicious stuff to it and get it tasting really good I was just walking in and I really thought that my flowers were done for the season and I just spotted a whole bunch of our cut flowers over here so I'm gonna actually pick a bunch of those and take them in for my table but there's enough to make a little bouquet. And they're out by the road, so I might as well pick them and bring them inside so that we can enjoy them because we don't see them out here at this time of the year, especially we're not out there in the garden every day. So I'm gonna take these inside with me and get them in some water.
when I started looking up recipes for pumpkin butter, it was very clear why my kids like it so much, and it's because it is completely loaded <laughs> with sugar. And so I found a recipe um, that uses coconut sugar and monk fruit, um, which if you haven't ever used monk fruit, I find that to be a really subtle um, alternative that you can just substitute things pretty easily. Um, a lot of the different kinds of sweeteners and sh uh, things to replace sugar, I don't necessarily love the flavor of, and I can taste it when I cook or when I bake with it. Um, and they just aren't, aren't really my favorite. Monk fruit seems to be um, the most similar to sugar. Um, and I can taste just a tiny bit of difference, but really it's almost the same. Um, coconut sugar has a really rich flavor to it. It's gonna replace the brown sugar that's in the recipe. Um, and I think that it does a really great job of, of replacing that. So what I have measured out here about, it's about the equivalent of two 15 ounce cans of pumpkin pie filling, which is almost two pounds. Um, and then I need a half a cup of the coconut sugar. And I need a full cup of the monk fruit. All right, so I need a full teaspoon of both cinnamon and nutmeg. And then the last thing that I need is just a couple of tablespoons of lemon juice. It's really starting to smell good. Come here, Ty. Come smell. Smell it. Smells good. Now it actually looks like pumpkin butter. He looked into the pot and he saw just the pumpkin puree and said that doesn't look like pumpkin butter at all. So <laughs> told him we needed some spices and some sugar. So I'm gonna just put this back into the pot and cook this down some more just so that it thickens up really nice. And I might run my immersion blender through here just one more time to make sure that it's nice and smooth. Cause you definitely don't want chunks in your pumpkin butter. nice and smooth all the spices and the ingredients are added and now for the true test we're gonna finish cooking it down and thicken it up so it gets really nice and thick um, in the right consistency right now it's just a little bit runnier than I would like to see so we're gonna cook a little bit more of the moisture off and then we're gonna do a taste test and see if the kids notice a difference between this and that is that's just filled with loads of sugar um, the purpose of the monk fruit and the coconut sugar is that it doesn't spike your own blood sugars in the same way that a traditional sugar would and so it keeps you more balanced. Um, a lot of people that have blood sugar issues have a lot better luck using these types of sweeteners and so um, there's something that I keep on hand because I try to keep as much sugar out of my kids' mouths as possible. Um, but I'm going to let this keep doing its thing and then I'm going to actually can this and put it up on our shelves so that we can eat it all winter long. So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you next week on This Ohio Farmhouse. <laughs>